so thank you for uh, making it on a on the last day of kipcon friday afternoon post lunch session so really appreciate you all coming in um this is the maintainer track session for litmus chaos <coughs> chaos engineering project it's an incubation project in cncf so we'll probably get started with uh, the introductions so i'm kartik i'm one of the maintainers of the litmus chaos project Sure. Want to talk to the guy? I am Karthik, one of the maintainers of the Litmus Chaos project. I work as a principal software engineer at Harness. And uh, we have Uma here. Hi everyone. Um, I am Uma Mukara. I am the head of Chaos Engineering at Harness. But uh, Karthik and I started uh, Litmus. We co-created it um, back in 2018. We've been maintaining. Um, this project uh, ever since. So uh, it is an incubating project at CNCF uh, for the last one year. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you all. Okay, so this is what we have on the agenda. We'll do a quick introduction to the Litmus Chaos project. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, heard about chaos engineering already, so we'll not spend too much time talking about what it is. We'll directly get into the project specifics. And um, we'll talk about one specific feature. Um, we'll probably stress upon it for a few minutes. That's about how you can use a single chaos control plane for doing chaos against um, varied uh, infrastructure targets, you know, across your different uh, cloud environments. And uh, we'll talk about what we got done since the last uh, KubeCon. So I think the, the project cycles nowadays are measured uh, in KubeCons. So we'll talk about what we did from the Europe KubeCon time. And then Uma will speak about the 3.0 beta for the Redmond's project and also uh, talk about the community a little bit. Right. So this is just a quick refresher um, just to set the context before we start off. So chaos engineering is essentially injecting controlled failures into your environment and the idea is to introduce these faults to find out weaknesses. If there is something that's unknown, something that you've probably not accounted for, you'll find those things out using chaos engineering. So there's a lot of uh, material on the internet around what it is. It's especially useful for distributed systems, right? As far as Litmus Chaos goes, it's a project that started around uh, 2018, 19 time. We are an incubation project the litmus um, tool or framework is kubernetes native it's uh, just a kubernetes application you can install it via uh, command helm command you can do a helm install and uh, you can just go do whatever configuration you need in the values so you can do the installation of litmus framework um, as a limited scope one just for yourself or you can do it at a larger scale for your organization there is uh, multiple modes supported, namespaced mode and clustered mode. So in the namespace mode, Litmus will allow you to orchestrate chaos in a specific namespace that might have been allotted to you as a developer. That's where you're experimenting. Or you could be the SRE and you'd like to set up uh, one control plane for um, all the developers. You're trying, trying to create some kind of a self-service environment. So you could go install it in a cluster mode. Once you've got the control plane running, and I'll probably show you a quick demo um, uh, before we get into the release details and all that. Once you set up your control plane, that's where all the chaos management happens. You're basically connecting different target environments into that control plane. These target clusters uh, could be residing anywhere across any cloud platform, or it could be an internal data center. You could be connecting clusters or you could be connecting namespaces as well. So you could have Litmus control plane in one cluster, and you're connecting either another cluster or one namespace in another cluster, right? Depends upon how much autonomy you have on your infrastructure. And when you connect that, um, you will be basically running an agent in the cluster or namespace that you've connected. And that agent is what we call as the chaos delegate here. That carries out the business logic of your chaos experiment. And when we talk about the business logic of chaos experiment, 
we are talking here the fault injection, the pre and post uh, fault checks that we would like to do, as well as any other um, hypothesis validation that you might want done. You might be querying some metrics, you might be looking at the availability of some downstream services. So any hypothesis that you have around how your application should behave, that can be bought in into your experiment spec. So the experiment in Litmus is essentially the fault plus the pre and post chaos checks plus whatever monitoring that you'd like to do. And all this will result in a verdict of your experiment, a success or a failure, which you can then use for uh, decision making. So in the Litmus control plane, you will find certain chaos artifact sources embedded. We call them the chaos hub. So chaos hub can be um, sort of spoken as an open marketplace of chaos experiments. That's where the community goes and pushes their experiments into. So you can pull those experiments from there, construct complex scenarios using them and, and go ahead. And once you've created something that you feel is worth sharing with others, you can push that scenario back into the chaos hub as well. So what you see here are just uh, uh, a couple of chaos hubs on, on the demo environment that I have. So once you've gone ahead and logged in into the control plane, once you've set it up, you've logged in, you've configured your chaos hubs, now you're ready to build your chaos scenario. As part of the scenario creation, you pick a fault and then you go ahead and say, what is it that I want measured during the fault execution, fault injection, right? We use, we use something called probes. We built something called probes to do that. You can actually see there are two probe types. There are many others. You can find them in the documentation. I've just got a couple of uh, um, screenshots here for illustration purposes. There's something called an HTTP probe where you can go and query the status of your uh, services. You could be testing the uh, service status for the application that you're subjecting to chaos, or you could be testing the status of some service that's dependent on the one that you're impacting. Right? And then there's something called a Prometheus probe. You could run some PromQL queries um, and uh, you could basically check what is the deviation in the metrics, right? Is that as per expectation or no, et cetera. So these are probes. We use that for steady state hypothesis validation. And once you've constructed your scenario by picking the right faults, by setting the right probes, now you go ahead and run it. And then you'd like to bring more users onto the control plane into your workspace. So in, in the Litmus control plane, each user is allocated a um, dedicated workspace, what we call as project. You go inside the project and you invite other members on the platform into that project to collaborate with you and you assign a certain role to them. Are they only going to be able to view the chaos scenarios that you've already run? Are they going to be able to run it? Are they able to construct new scenarios, etc.? So that's the next step that you would generally do. Then when you've got that system working, you've got your experiments working at as desired, it is proven to be effective, now you would like to run this again and again, right? Uh, you might want to run it uh, as some kind of a background service. You can schedule a, a scenario for recording execution. There are some cron schedules that you can do. Or you could be invoking your chaos scenario as part of a CD pipeline. You go ahead and deploy your application. And you want to check the sanity, so you go ahead and run a chaos scenario or you could be triggering the um, chaos scenario as part of a GitOps deployment. If you're not running the pipeline way, if you're using GitOps, then you have Flux or Argo CD or any of these tools, go and upgrade your application. And the application change can go ahead and trigger a chaos scenario run, right? So that can be done. So what you see here are some screenshots that explain how you can do it. There's a recording schedule. Um, you have the Ritmus API, which you can use. Um, and you can invoke the Litmus API to run the chaos scenarios from your pipelines. Or you could be setting up the event tracker policies. This is a CRD where you can see in the conditions, you're basically going and looking for certain um, checks on your deployments. What is the replica count that I have here? What is the uh, image that I have here? Any changes to this configuration is actually going to trigger a chaos scenario run. And finally, once you've got all these scenarios running and you're comfortable, now you would actually go ahead and check what is the resilience trend, right? So you're running these scenarios, that's great, but are they succeeding, are they not? What is the state of your application's resilience? So Litmus provides something called as a resilience score. So this is a metric that essentially bridges your chaos scenario and your application target, right? So this application is this resilient to this scenario. The scenario can actually be an outage that you saw in the past, so that's why you've actually created it. 
So you're going and mapping that against your application, and you're saying, this is how resilient I am. And there's a specific way to calculate this resilience score. We'll probably talk about it um, once I do the demo. You can actually go ahead and add a lot of probes to your faults. Each fault is going to return a probe success percentage. And each scenario is going to have multiple such faults, right? And each fault is associated with certain constraints, what we call as probes. So each fault is associated with a weightage or a criticality. And that criticality, along with the probe success percentage, together decides your resilience score on a scale of 0 to 100. And using this metric, you can compare scenario runs. Maybe you ran the scenario on build X, and then you ran it on build Y. You're comparing how the resilience varied. Or you might have run the scenario in your dev environment and QA and then pre-prod and prod. You might be looking at how the resilience trends have been changing across environments. Or maybe there is a change that you made within the experiment spec. Your your scenario spec, you have gone ahead and changed a tunable. You've said instead of 2,000 milliseconds of latency, I'm injecting 2,500. Now you want to see what happened across runs because of the change in the amount of latency, right? So you can still go ahead and do the comparison based on the resilience scores. So that's about uh, most of the features. And I'll just introduce you to this concept of single control plane on hybrid infrastructure. I think you might have already got it, but I just want to stress upon it a little bit. So with Litmus, you have one um, control plane, which is comprising of a, a dashboard, a chaos center, a chaos server, and a MongoDB to store the state. And you could be connecting other Kubernetes clusters or namespaces, which are running anywhere. You could be running on on-prem KTS, you could be running on AWS, you could be running on Azure, VMware, what have you. As long as you have the network connectivity, you will be able to connect them and run chaos. So why is this powerful? It's one of the recent um, ways of deploying applications is to have it spread across different uh, cl cloud providers for redundancy purposes. So you would like to have one homogeneous control plane from where you can actually target uh, your infrastructure components residing in different platforms. So that's what is enabled by this model. You can actually see this in this illustration. We have the portal here, which is the chaos center, and then you have different clusters. Uh, you can see three clusters here. Each of them is connected to the same portal, and they could actually be residing on different environments. I could have one cluster, which is actually co-residing with my control plane, and then there could be others. For example, you see something called virtual machines, which could be either VMware or OpenStack, or it could be maybe bare metal physical machines. And then you have your, your cloud environments, and you, could, you will have the agents of Litmus sitting there, and that is going to carry out the execution of your chaos workflow, what we've been talking as chaos scenarios all this while. And then it emits some metrics and events, which you can bring back to your control plane and make a decision on how your resilience looks. Right, so that's what it is. The feature summary is, is, is there here. This diagram is sort of having a lot of circles. Um, you can see the chaos center at the center of it all. You can use that for user management and taming you can connect agents to it. Once you've connected an agent, you do some amount of asset discovery or find out what services run there, what microservices run there, the eventual subjects of your chaos. Then you pull the faults that you would like to do against those microservices that you've discovered. And then you add in the hypothesis validation using probes. That's the observability part. Let's say you're working off a disconnected environment. You might want to change the images you might, you might have pulled the litmus images and pushed it to your own registry. So you can go ahead and use that, make that setting in, uh, in the control plane and say all the images that I'm pulling for the experiment execution should come from this registry. And then the chaos workflow actually runs. You could, you could schedule that once or you could schedule that repeatedly. And then this loop, just the circle just continues. Right? And you can see a few other circles here. We basically say that the experiments that are there support different runtimes, container D, Docker, CR, AO. You have the GitOps way of doing things. You can enable a switch in the control plane and all the chaos scenarios that you build in the platform can get committed back into a Git repository so that you can share it with your teammates, right? So that's, that's pretty much the, the summary. Uh, before I go to the release section, I'll show you a very quick demonstration. Let me pull up the chaos center. You can see this is the chaos center. I'm going to log in with default credentials. Admin and Litmus is the default that you get once you've installed. 
I've gone into the admin project, as you can see here. Each user is going to be allocated a dedicated project. I happen to log in as admin. I have the admin project here. And you can see the chaos delegates section has one chaos delegate connected, one cluster connected. It's called self-agent. And I've run some scenarios before. I'm going to run a new one. And you can see the chaos hubs here. So this is the chaos artifact source that I talked about. And you can see experiments of different categories. There are a multitude of experiments which mostly solve your resilience needs. You can write new ones as well. Litmus allows for uh, creating new experiments using an SDK. So let me schedule a chaos scenario. And I'm trying to follow the uh, sequence that I showed you in the, the circle in the previous slide. I go ahead and select the chaos uh, uh, delegate. I've selected the self-agent here. I've selected the hub that I'm going to use as my artifact source for this scenario creation. I'm just going to give it a name. I can go add a new fault. Let's do something that's very simple. Let's say I'm going to do a pod kill. And I'm interested in subjecting specific application to pod kill. Let's say I have a microservices application. You can see there is an online boutique here, simple microservices app. I've selected that namespace. I'm going to select deployment as the workload kind. I'm going to select one of the services, the carts, right? So this is the asset discovery I was speaking about. So we are going to target a deployment which is identified by this label and which resides in this particular namespace, right? And then I, I, I have the option of adding probes. I'll probably not do that in the interest of time. And I can provide some tunables here. How long do I want the chaos to run? At what intervals do I need the pod kills to happen? What is the nature of the kill? etc. And that differs from experiment to experiment. And there is some advanced configuration that you can do to define topology and um, additional filtering of workloads. So with this, let me go ahead and uh, provide some weightage. This is the this is the part of the resilience score calculation I was talking about. So let, let's say I give all points because I've just selected one fault. And I have the option of scheduling it repeatedly. I'll schedule it just once. This is the summary, and I just go ahead and finish it. And you can see the experiment execution can be tracked here. Typically, each experiment within a scenario, I've just got one fault or one experiment within the scenario. You can pull multiple ones. Each experiment is associated with a couple of steps. One is just pulling the template from the hub and installing it on your cluster. And the next step is the actual invocation of the uh, fault and the hypothesis validation, etc. The business logic runs in the next step. Right. So while we are at this, uh, I'd like to show you the Grafana dashboard that I'm using to monitor the boutique application. It's a very simple dashboard. Just got QPS and some latency being measured here. And I've annotated this dashboard with a metric that's coming from the Litmus framework. So you can actually see when the fault is live. You will have some detail here that actually tells you the fault is active. And then you can see how the application behavior has changed during such time. Right. So let's wait for that to happen. And meanwhile, you can also do all that I did on the chaos center using the Litmus API. So you can use that to automate all these proceedings. And you could invoke that in, a con in your CI CD pipelines, or maybe you have your own um, uh, test execution framework that you'd like to plug into. And once you have these runs executed, I said you can compare it. You can actually see um, some runs here. I'm just doing a random selection, but ideally you would be interested in selecting the workflows that matter to you and probably the ones um, that are running on different environments or different builds. So I've just selected it and it shows you some upward trend in resilience. Um, maybe I've got uh, better resilience across um, builds, right? So that's improving here. And this comparison is based, uh, made on the basis of the resilience score. And you could download some reports on how your experiment execution has gone, what probe, what are the probe results, um, what are the uh, verdicts, what is the resilience score, all that information is available. And uh, you can actually go ahead and add members to your team, like I said. So I have got a couple of members apart from the admin here. I've got Uma, who is editor, and there's Karthik, who is viewer on this platform, right? So you can create new users and 
and once they are available on the platform, you can pull them into the team. So that's a quick uh, demonstration of this particular uh, deletion is happening, the particle is happening, and you can see what's happened here. As far as the front end and the carts go, the QPS nose dived, the error count increased. So this is uh, reflecting an inefficient deployment or something that's gone wrong with my application, right? In this case, I just have a single replica of carts, which is why the failure is seen, but the same could be caused due to an application failure, an application bug, a software bug in your code as well. So this was a quick demonstration of uh, what I was talking about. I have not added any probes, so you can see without any additional constraints, the experiment succeeds, but there are several runs that have happened prior. For example, this one, where you can see the failure has happened because of a probe failure. The experiment verdict has failed because one of the probe has failed. You can see that in the chaos result here. So that was a very quick um, demonstration of what you can do with litmus chaos. Let me go back to the presentation and talk about what we got done um, between previous Valencia KubeCon to now. So this is a project which um, has monthly releases. We have releases on the 15th of every month. And there's a community sync up call that happens immediately after on the third Wednesday. So across the last uh, few months, we've had about three to four, uh, about four releases. And um, this is what we managed to do in that time. We've added new fault types. There's a HTTP chaos experiment suite that we've added, which allows you to simulate erroneous status codes, corrupted uh, response body, et cetera, to see how your application behaves. You can inject latency. You could, we also have support now added for newer versions of Kubernetes on OpenShift. We've upgraded our operators, et cetera, to be able to do that. The support for many chaos experiments of the network category, uh, the HTTP chaos experiments, the DNS ones, um, latency, packet drops, et cetera, are now supported in environments which also have service mesh running there. And we've got support for randomization of fault inputs. What we mean by this is, let's say, uh, I provide a range of latency, zero to 2,000. You could actually be injecting faults with latency anywhere between zero to 2,000, right? In different iterations of the experiment, you'll have different value of fault getting injected. And you can also uh, do the same for intervals. You can do the same for any other tunable that is native to a fault. You can randomize the input. We've got the ability to do all the operations that I just showed you, most of the operations at least, that I showed you on the Chaos Center using a CLI tool called Litmus CTL. You can list workflows, um, you can trigger new workflow runs, you can delete them, basically do some CRUD operations using the Litmus CTL tool. We've added support for the runtimes, container D and CRIO. We started out with Docker, but obviously that's replaced with mostly container D is the de facto, and OpenShift uses CRIO. So we have um, first class support for these runtimes. And we also introduced improvements to our SDK, which basically helps um, developers to bootstrap their chaos experiments. And we've also got some newer category of experiments here, as you can see. Uh, we have got applications that, we've got chaos that does um, um, faults on Spring Boot applications. We've improved the scope of our, of our probes. So some of what you saw in the spec, we had the, the Prometheus probe and the HTTP probe, but there's a command probe, which we've gone ahead and made it very flexible. So command probes help you to run any validation of your choice. It need not be an HTTP um, request. It need not be a PromQL query, but you could be doing anything. You could be having your own CLI, anything could be done. And then we've made our um, APIs better, more user friendly. So we've got some feedback that we got from the community on how to simplify our APIs, we've done that. So with that said, um, I'll now hand it off to Umar to talk about what's coming next. I think I got the mic. Thank you, uh, Karthik. Uh, there was a great uh, run of what we got done uh, in the last uh, six months. But just to go back, um, we've been adding uh, newer features for almost three years now, right? So uh, with a release coming out every month uh, on the 15th, right? I think we have done more than 30 releases without missing uh, the 15th date, right? So what that did uh, really is, it, it's kind of feature complete to do the basic uh, chaos experimentation, right? 
So Litmus 1.0 was uh, more about getting the chaos operator, all the CRD is done, um, making sure that you do the chaos experimentation in a cloud native way, right? So chaos, uh, Litmus Chaos 2.0 was um, getting um, the multi-cluster support, uh, introducing the chaos center where multiple clusters or namespaces can connect to the chaos center so and introduce the teaming, right? So that enabled enterprises to think of chaos engineering uh, in a practical way, right? So more teams can come and practice chaos engineering. So what's the status today is, you know, there are a bunch of um, users, teams, enterprises using uh, the open source Litmus. And uh, then what does it mean by Litmus 3.0, right? So we are kickstarting the effort of 3.0, uh, you know, this week. You know, it goes on maybe for six months to nine months to one year. What do you really want to focus on making Litmus more robust, right? And because, you know, whatever the bug fixes that the community reports uh, that we find through our automated test, uh, we'll focus on making sure that uh, even if it means that, you know, re-architecting few things here and there, we'll focus uh, primarily on making it rigid. And we also want to uh, make Litmus leaner. So what that means is today to run Chaos Experiment, it runs uh, under Argo workflow. So many people uh, want to run Litmus uh, experiments in pipelines, uh, right? So maybe it is, if you're running just one uh, Chaos Experiment, it may be uh, having a little bit more footprint than what you need, right? Because you have Argo workflow controller, it can do a lot of things, but just for one experiment, it may be a little bit more than what you want, right? So we are going to start work on providing uh, a native orchestration uh, engine uh, where you can run the exact chaos experiment without uh, the Argo workflow. So that's that's going to make uh, Litmus leaner, probably, you know, on uh, low footprint Kubernetes uh, on edge and other places, you can start running Litmus in a, a more easier way. And the next focus for us also is how to take chaos engineering for developers. So one thing that we have observed is we started originally for SREs running chaos experiment in pre-prod, right? You know, just make it uh, uh, totally declarative uh, through YAMLs and also uh, make sure that, you know, it's got all the API support, chaos controllers, operators, everything. And then we realized that chaos has found its need in the pipelines, right? So more and more community users are uh, coming and using it in uh, their CD pipelines, right? So that's when um, this chaos, um, the workflow engine uh, getting started, uh, more and more adoption. Now, I think, you know, it's time to do even more uh, left shifting where developers can come and think of uh, introducing chaos experiments even before the code gets merged, right? Think of the scenarios as, you know, I'm writing a lot of cloud native code and uh, it's before it goes to, you know, build, eventually it goes to a pipeline and then finally gets pushed. Is it possible for me uh, uh, to run a chaos experiment on the build possible built code, right? Um, what happens if you delay it is, you know, it goes to the pipeline and then gets deployed and then rollback has to be done. So there's a little bit of a, a cost involved in that. Can the developers really avoid that, right? So um, it's actually great to see the adoption of chaos uh, going back a little bit to the left, right? So uh, we are going to focus on how to make things easier for developers. Uh, what it really means is uh, making it lean is one of them and maybe introduce one more CRD, right, um, to make a chaos experiment run, so et cetera, et cetera. So it is in the design phase and we are actually calling out for um, discussions uh, on um, how, uh, what's the feedback that uh, you're going to give us in terms of these requirements, et cetera. Right, so we have created a discussion thread on, uh, uh, Litmus, can you go to that discussion? <clears throat> so if you go to the Litmus repo, uh, there's a discussion uh, thread created and what's the focus of um, the roadmap um, for the next uh, one year. And um, we're going to work through this monthly maintainer 
our contributor sessions uh, a little bit openly, right? So whoever is interested, they can actually come and not only contribute the code, but you can contribute your requirements and ideas. Hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking of uh, for my chaos engineering use case. So, you know, come on openly and then discuss um, and we'll see, you know, how to get that done, right? So that's, uh, that's one announcement that we as maintainers want to do that, you know, we are opening up the board for the next phase of Ritmus, which is 3.0, right? So, and finally, I want to conclude this session by um, showing how to get in touch with the community, right? So, uh, we've been fortunate uh, to get contributions from various different people, right, uh, over a period of uh, last uh, uh, three to four years. So, we have uh, 200 plus contri different contributors from various companies, right? Um, so, we would like uh, that to increase more. So, uh, we always encourage uh, contributing new ideas, new experiment types, not necessarily that you have to develop, but you know, hey, here is my use case and then, you know, somebody will pick it up, right, uh, if you can. Then we uh, certainly would like to uh, add more as a core team, right. So, the other contribution that we think uh, can be accelerated is the list of experiment uh, types into the Chaos Hub. So, Chaos Hub has grown from uh, 30 plus so experiments last year to about 45 now, or 40 plus experiments. So uh, now that we have a stable litmus platform, it's time to, you know, focus contributions uh, on the experiments, right? So the community has actually um, created a lot of new experiments because it's got a good SDK, but uh, we have not concentrated in requesting, you know, here is how you can upstream it, maybe, you know, the you know, project can maintain your new experiment. So we're going to focus a little bit more on asking our community members that, you know, upstream your experiments back so that it can be managed better and more people can use it, right? And there's a, a contribution guide, uh, right, um, that's available, contribution guidelines are in accordance with um, the rest of the CNCF projects, right? Um, uh, we are especially looking on, you know, easier areas as well, docs, or if you want, if you are doing some uh, testing, uh, we have a, a nice E2E platform that tests Litmus itself for every release process. It can receive more contributions and Litmus agents can be made, uh, you know, a linear helm charts. There are already some contributions there. So there are many, many areas uh, which the project can, uh, you know, take contributions. And to do all this, you know, we're always hanging out uh, at the Litmus channel on Kubernetes Slack. So please do join us. And we also run a monthly um, community uh, meetups, virtual meetups where, you know, users come and talk about uh, their use cases and also ask questions. And also maintainers announce any new features that were introduced, et cetera, et cetera. So because of um, this beta that we are announcing, we we'll also run one more uh, uh, meetup every month that is for contributors and maintainers, right? It's a maintainer meet. So, you know, if you are looking at developing yourself into a more active cloud native, uh, you know, contributor is an opportunity to directly work with the maintainers, right? So, <clears throat> that's all uh, I have. And, you know, we obviously want to know if you like um, the project, we would want you to like the project, so give us a start. That will always help you, you know, like, know who's liking this project. Um, so that's all I have. Maybe it's time to take any questions. Uh, beyond this session, we'll be still around here. If you want a, a, a demo in person, we can still do that. Right. Thank you. <laughs>